spirit and in the attitude of worship. Amen? Amen. We want to give God thanks for our, our host, Pastor Sophie. Amen, Reverend Sophie, for this wonderful gathering. As I sat there, I began to think, uh, we have come from far to praise God. Normally when you go to a conference, you're being invited to a church, uh, and you're the, you're the guest speaker, or you're visiting and supporting that ministry. Uh, but tonight, uh, we're from all different places. We're from all over the city. We're from all different churches. But here we are together in the house of the Lord uh, to bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And God richly bless you for being here on tonight. Uh, praise God. We pray that before you leave this place, uh, you will leave with a blessing. Amen. 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 And we have been greeted and we have sang and we have given God our worship. I have some folks with me. I know Pastor already introduced my husband, but you know, normally I don't get to have him around. He normally would be working nights. Uh, and so oftentimes I'm out ministering and he's not there, but he is here tonight. Uh, our minister Gardner, wave your hand again. Amen. And I, I see another gardener in the, the midst. Uh, I got a cousin, folks. God bless you, Brother Gardner, also for being here tonight. Amen. And I want you to make some noise for my prayer team that is here tonight. Come on, prayer team, stand up and just show yourself off. You see, if I don't get an amen, I brought my own back to I brought some folks that know how to pray. Some folks that know how to challenge. My God, put out a war cry unto the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. And you have already uh, met Michelle James, a good friend. We've known each other from high school. I heard Pastor Sophie kind of boasting and saying, you know, that she is she knows our, our Pastor Melissa from from 1997. But uh, Michelle, we go way back, <laughs> way back, high school. Oh, good grief, grade nine. Yeah, that was when uh, we we started. And and thank God, I can say, look what the Lord has done. Amen. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. And it, it's a good thing when you have some stable folks in your life. Amen. Amen. You know, it's, it, it's, we, we, we want to make sure that the people that we choose to be in our corner yes. is somebody that can encourage us when we are down. Yes. Uh, that will stand with us through the thick and through the thin. Amen. And sometimes you go through some stuff in life uh, and you got to shed some folks. My God, you gotta, you gotta let go of some folks. Uh, but there's some people that God will put in your life uh, and they will stand the test of time. Amen. And uh, Michelle is one of those that have stand the test of time. I see also sitting beside me when I was sitting down there was my daddy, Daddy Walker, Pastor Walker. And I'm telling you, this man, he knows my story. The, the, the theme of the conference says, if you only knew my story. I got someone here that he knows my story. And I thank God for you, Dad. I call him Dad. Sometimes it, he gives me a friend option, and then he comes back, and I'm saying, you can't be your. <laughs> so I want to thank God. My Alma Beer, Sister Christine, won't you stand? She hates when I do this, but I do it anyhow. Because she's one of my prayer partners, and, and, and we've been praying from, oh my Lord, before we even knew what intercession was. And, and she helps me look cute. She keeps me looking cute in my room. So she's not, she, she prays and she dresses me. <laughs> Amen. And so I just want to give God thanks for each and every one that is here. If you will turn your Bibles with me, praise God, we will go through Genesis 37. Bless the name of the Lord. Genesis 37. When you find it, just shout out an amen. 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 I see Sister Jessica in the back from Praise. Praise Cathedral, one of my colleagues. Come on, stand up, Sister Jessica. She's so shy. Stand up. That's one of my colleagues. She's a lawyer at my workplace. She's a little bit, but she's talawa. <laughs> she says, wow. I uh, just love you. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Amen. Amen. Genesis 37, and we will read from verse 9. And he dreamed a dream, and he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made up sense to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and the father rebuked him. And said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I 
and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth, and his brethren, his brethren envied him. But his father observed the saying. Say his father observed the saying. It means that his father pondered on that which he had heard. And his brethren went to feed their flocks in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. This is Joseph responding to the call of his father. And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren, tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, they are departed hence, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And this is where the story gets good. And when they saw him afar off, even, more, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. There's some dream killers around. Yeah. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of our hands to deliver him to his father again. So Reuben was conspiring to do something else. And it came to pass when Joseph came unto the brethren that they stripped Joseph of his coat, his coat of many colors, the one that his father had given to him, the one that his father had made for him, the one that was specifically designed for him, the one, the coat that he wore was cut to fit. It was made for him. Amen. And they sat down, rather the colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty, for there was no water in it. And they sat down and ate bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down. And Judah, 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 Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not the hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh and our brethren. And his brethren was content. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. Come on, you got to talk back to me. And the word of the Lord is? Amen. It is blessed. Amen. So we have just read of the story of Joseph, a very popular story in the Bible, one that we have heard from my, my grandmother would say from my eyes was at my knees and probably even before that. You know, you get to Sunday school and one of the stories, if you don't know any other story, you know about Moses and you know about Joseph. And I thought, God, what can I bring that is different out of this message? I began to think about the title uh, of this conference tonight, if you only knew my story. Uh, the if implies uh, that there is some information uh, that if you had, your response to me would be different. Uh, it might be good or it might be bad. Uh, but if you have some information uh, on me, uh, your response uh, is going to di be different if uh, you only knew my story. What is a story? The dictionary declares it is an account of past events uh, in someone's life uh, or an evolution of something. Uh, it means that as you continue to live, uh, there is a story that is being written uh, day in and day out. There is a new chapter. We go through seasons in our lives uh, and we can see where one season closes uh, and another season begins. Amen. Uh, and so here is Joseph. Joseph, 
uh, beloved by his father, Joseph, was about to change chapters in his life. Uh, when you look at Joseph, uh, uh, Joseph lived, uh, my God, in Hebron. For the Bible says uh, that he left the veils of Hebron uh, to go find his brethren. Where Joseph lived, uh, the word Hebron means community, alliance, or fellowship. Uh, uh, Joseph was leaving a community, a secure place. Uh, uh, it was just Father's Day and we, we were preaching at Michelle's church and we were talking about a father and in the absence of a father, something dies on the inside of you. So here is Joseph and you got to come with me. Leaving Hebron because his daddy told him and, and I guess that I guess that, that, that he didn't know that his brothers didn't, his sons didn't like his younger sons. You know, like I thought about it and I thought he must have known he must he, he should have known, but it doesn't seem like he knew because if if, if I know that somebody's gonna hurt my baby, I'm not gonna shed my baby. If I know that someone has ill against my baby, I'm not gonna wanna put my baby out there. So so I'm not sure if he recognized or not, but the Bible says that he took him and told him, Go from the place of safety, go from that which you know. And it wasn't just that he was going down the road when you do the studies it tells you that it might have been a two day horse ride walking, it, it, it wasn't next door he was going, it wasn't down the street but the journey would have taken him about two days, so here is Joseph, my God still love his brothers even though he had a dream and recognized what was going to happen, my God if I know what was going to happen I said God I said God, oh God you told me I'm going to be the head and not the tail so I'm not going down there that's what most of us would do, right? We would look and we would say, I'm not going to go. But Joseph was submissive. Joseph submitted to the direction of his father. He submitted to the love for his brethren. And so he left the place of security. He left the place of alliance. He left a community that he loved. He left his father, bless God. And he went to find his brothers. My God, his season is about to change. I begin to think about David. When David was minding his own business in, 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 in the mountains feeding sheep, and his, brother, his father calls him. And, and there's something about the little one that always got to do the dirty work. My, my, my four year old said to me a couple weeks back, he says, Sorry, he's five, right, Christy? <laughs> I'll check with the dog, man. He's fine. He said, Mommy, I don't want to be last. 